Osteoporosis is a diagnosis of fear and anxiety. After treating hundreds of patients and reversing osteoporosis every day, I've realized that osteoporosis is a reflection of so many of the problems of our medical system. So stick with me as I review the top six things that they don't want you to know about osteoporosis. All right, now, I'm not really a conspiracy theorist, but this is gonna kind of sound like that because I am designed to ask tough questions. I am trained to do thorough research, and that makes me a physician armed with the tools to seek truth with a passion for education. Now, that's a problem when the system is stacked against us. So when I look at osteoporosis, I see osteoporosis as a symptom of all the things wrong with our system. Let's start with the diagnosis. First, screening is way too late and suboptimal. Imaging modality is tied to prescription writing. If this, T-score, then that, drug, equation. It cuts out what we should be looking at, which is, why are you losing bone? It ignores a new technology. DEXA will probably never yield to REMS. This imaging is actually designed to prevent new technology from emerging, the way that they have called this the gold standard with no other thing to compare it to. So the number one thing that they don't want you to know about osteoporosis is that the imaging is very flawed. And yet, it's all we have, we have to use it. Number two is risk factors. Doctors are really not trained to look at most risk factors. Most could list off a couple, but there are so many. Here's a couple that they might not have thought about. Birth control pills, linked to osteoporosis, irregular menstrual cycles, eating disorders, autoimmune disease, chronic inflammation, toxic exposure, sedentary lifestyle, gut dysfunction, celiac disease, poor nutrition, over-the-counter drugs, prescription drugs, and on and on and on and on and on. Here's the thing, all doctors, all patients with osteoporosis should be educated on these potential risk factors. If you have one of these risk factors, you should be screened. The system is not designed for prevention. The system is not designed for a cure. Remember that a patient cured is a customer lost. Doctors and patients alike should understand these risk factors because if you have a risk factor, you should be screened for osteoporosis. You should be screened early for osteoporosis. You should not wait until you're 65. So talk to your doctor about risk factors for osteoporosis that you think that you have and get a DEXA scan or get a REMS. Get something so that you can show what your current bone quality and density is and then you'll know what to do with it. All right, so number three thing that they don't want you to know about osteoporosis is that our system is not designed to cure it. It's not designed to reverse it. I saw a meme on Instagram recently that said that a patient cured is a customer lost. Now that is a very morbid way of looking at our system, but recognize that healthcare is a $4.3 trillion per year expenditure, almost 20% of our GDP. So as physicians, as people in the healthcare space, we must ignore that it is a money-making machine. But yet we know that curing osteoporosis means no drugs, no fractures, no surgery, no care. So should we really rely on a system that profits from sickness? We don't have a choice, but as a provider who's been in both the employee model and the private pay model, I can tell you that even if you're ethical, even if you have strong morals and ethical values, these subconscious financial pulls can persuade you to make decisions that you wouldn't otherwise make. So I think it's really unfortunate that we have a system that is built like this, but we can't escape it right now. I'm not personally gonna change it, but here's the deal, is that we have to be in charge of our own health. We have to build a system outside of our current healthcare system that removes the restrictions of insurance, that focuses on reversal and prevention, not treatment. So the next thing I want you to consider that they don't want you to know about is that HRT is a powerful tool for osteoporosis. What most doctors tell patients is, you're worried about your phone health. Yeah, HRT is not for that. It's not FDA approved for that. There's really no area where I feel like the system is stacked against people than when it comes to women's hormones. The research, from my perspective, even though there's a ton of it, the research is really lacking asking the right questions with the right products. The pharmaceutical interests have destroyed this field because the research is focused on the synthetic drugs, not the bioidentical drugs. The medical organization recommendations unfortunately seem to be heavily biased by the pharmaceutical industry. I can't think of any other way around it. Remember that there are synthetic drugs that have higher risks and there's bioidentical drugs that seem to have less risks, but there's so many versions and there's so much fear around dosing that the right studies will probably never be done. 
what I consider to be the OBGYN mafia on Instagram, telling people that they need to stay in their lane, that coaches need to stop talking about hormones because they don't understand them, and that you shouldn't think for yourself and you should just trust the medical organization. This drives me nuts because every woman will lose estrogen at menopause. It doesn't matter what supplements you take. Every woman will lose bone in the subsequent five to 10 years or even longer at a more rapid pace than they would otherwise. So don't we want to know what our starting point is, what your risk of fracture is? Why don't we tell people to get screened before then? Why don't we tell people to get screened at 50, to be monitored, to prevent osteoporosis? What I really struggle with in all this messaging around the, the new field of doctors who are talking about women's health and menopause is that they're still propagating the same messages from 20 years ago. Don't ask questions. You don't need to be screened before 65. Don't worry about it. Suffer through it. I think it's terrible. So it's really hard not to draw the conclusion then that the system wants women to become osteoporotic. They want you to be weak. They want you to be dependent on them. It's hard to not think of it in any other way. I look at it kind of like the Diabetes Association when you go back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, when they used to recommend a low fat, high carbohydrate diet to accommodate giving insulin to diabetics. Now this persisted until really recently when the evidence was so overwhelming that they could no longer face the scrutiny of all of the people in the health world who were saying, would you stop telling diabetics to eat a high carbohydrate diet? It's just crazy. So this parallel to diabetes is that they know you're gonna lose bone when you go through menopause. They'll tell you that HRT is risky. They'll tell you to tolerate it or use tiny doses or what I would call placebo HRT, which isn't gonna impact your bones. I see it all the time. Then they'll tell you that you can't have a DEXA to be screened. You need to be 65. And then once you turn 65 and you get a DEXA, you have osteoporosis and now you need drugs. So it's hard not to draw this conclusion from the setup that if we know you're gonna go through menopause, we know that you're gonna rapidly lose bone and we're gonna tell you not to go on HRT, why don't we tell you to get screened so we know what your starting point is? Not every woman is gonna go on hormone replacement therapy and that's okay. But if they already have osteoporosis, it might change the equation around the risk benefit. Would you agree with that? So the fourth thing they don't want you to know that HRT is a powerful tool. And this conversation around menopause, while it's great and we're bringing a lot of things to light, there's a lot of old dogma that's being passed forward and it's being disguised through the lens of feminism, but it's actually the same misogyny that existed 20 years ago. All right, the fifth thing they don't want you to know about osteoporosis is that nutrition recommendations for osteoporosis are terrible. <laughs> now, I actually think that mainstream medicine and integrative practitioners are a fault here. I think that they have taken kind of two different, but both unfortunate pathways neither of which are really helping people with osteoporosis. Now, the mainstream medical system is going to encourage people to consume what I would consider to be the mainstream standard American diet. Now, we know that this is inflammatory. We know that it leads to obesity. It's nutrient poor. There's nothing good about a highly processed food diet. So we don't really need to talk about that much further. But the integrative and the functional space has sort of taken this a different direction and I don't think it's helpful. There's a lot of conversation around the alkaline diet, around a plant forward diet, because it's going to be better for your bones because somehow the acidity of a steak is going to cause your bones to crumble. There's a conversation around worrying about the environment before worrying about your bones. I'm not gonna talk about the environment right now, but please understand that you can have your steak and eat it too. What they don't want you to know, and the most critical part is, is that the protein, especially animal protein, and nutrient-dense food is the key to improving your bone health, to improving your muscle mass, to improving your health span overall. And if you're eating a whole foods diet that is rich in vegetables and fruit and animal protein, alkalinity doesn't matter. If you're eating a standard American diet, maybe it does, but don't do that. Food is medicine. Food is the foundation of improving bone health. All right, and the last one. So, the sixth thing that they don't want you to know about osteoporosis is that you do actually need to exercise. Now, I used to tell people this too, so I'm totally at fault. I was worried about them fracturing and I still am worried about people fracturing. However, we can't take our patients with osteoporosis and put them in a padded room. Guess what? It's gonna get worse. Now, if you say, oh, that's why I use the drugs. Okay, but for most people, they don't wanna take the drugs. And I think most people don't need to take the drugs. So we need to tell them to do the exercises that actually benefit their bones and their muscles. So if you look at some of the evidence, you could say that 
the Lift More trials, Dr. Belinda Beck's work has done a great job of demonstrating that high intensity resistance training and impact training are going to have the biggest impact on our bones and probably our muscles. Now, I used to tell people, don't lift more than five pounds, make sure you take your calcium and vitamin D. But the truth is, I was doing them a massive disservice. I just didn't know, wasn't trained. So while everybody is going to be different in their starting point, many people with osteoporosis have never done resistance training, have never done impact training, and that's okay. But we need to progressively overload if we're going to improve our bones and our muscles. That's gonna look different for everybody. But what they're telling you will keep you weak. What they're telling you will likely lead to being on a drug. So that's it. Those are the top six things they don't want you to know about osteoporosis. Now, do I sound like a conspiracy theorist yet? Maybe, but think of it this way. Our healthcare system is really a sick care system when it comes to chronic disease. I am not disparaging doctors. I'm not disparaging development. They are caught in a system and are usually very well-meaning. Technology is a must if we're going to improve our health span. However, it's up to us to create our own health. We hold the responsibility for our health. These six things that they don't want you to know are driven by a system that doesn't want you well. A patient cured is a customer lost.